So I've always been the kind of person who thinks no means find another way. <laughs> when I was a teenager, living up in the Bronx, yes, that Bronx, my dream was to be an artist and to go to the School of Visual Arts. And I applied and was rejected and I applied and I re was rejected and I tried and I tried and I tried and I finally got in when I was 20. That's just about the age where most people are getting ready to graduate. I decided to become a performer when I was 35. That's the age when most people give it up. So when my husband of nearly 15 years told me that he no longer wanted to be married, I was sure I could change his mind. I mean, come on. Hadn't we spent all that time living and loving and making art together? But this time, I, I just had to accept that sometimes no means no. There were days where I'd arrive at one of my many day jobs and not remember getting up, getting dressed, or how I got there. But there were many nights I would sit on my kitchen floor with my cats and howl just cry, 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 because I was afraid to be alone. And my friends, I have really good friends, they tried to help. They said, Michelle, you don't have to be alone. Just sign up for OK Cupid. <laughs> now, there are a couple of things that you should know about me. One is, when I was young, a kid, I walked into subway tunnels and on L tracks to write graffiti. Shell. 194. I did. When I was an adult, I also hosted many a rowdy burlesque show wearing a little G-string and little coochie coochie, you know, whatever. The most, those were the most clothes that you saw during the show. But somehow I did not either have the stomach or the cojones for online dating. I mean, whatever, whatever happened to just going out and getting trashed and taking someone home? Of course, the last time I had done that had been 1990, and I married him. <laughs> but so, being me, I was like, oh, I can get through this. And then after the rebound and the fling and the mistake and the rebound and the fling and the mistake, I had to just take a breath. And, and then there was this other conspiracy going on against me that year. Every time I picked up a magazine or turned on the television or went online, I saw yet another article or opinion piece about the invisible woman. And now, after a certain age, the bloom is off your rose and the rot has now begun. <laughs> now, arithmetic's not my strong point, but I started counting. And then I realized I was a woman of a certain age. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. And after another rebound and fling and mistake and rebound and fling and mistake, I had to accept that at this point in my life now, I was statistically more likely to be struck by lightning than ever again by love at first, last, or any sight. And so I entered a new phase in my life, one I called manopause. <laughs> And for one, something better to do, I decided I was going to write a book. I mean, why not? I've been a storyteller for years. I had a lot of stories. People are saying, Michelle, when are you going to write a book? So I did. Why not? Like I said, there's nobody around anymore to tell me what I can and cannot do, right? It took a while. I got an agent. I got a publisher. I had to write a manuscript. That took a while. And then I was nearly done with the manuscript, I mean. And I decided to take a walk by Prospect Park. And I don't know if you know that part of Brooklyn, but I live near the south part of Prospect Park. And by the circle, there's like this little grove of magnolia trees. And it's one of those like last cold days, if spring, before like it starts getting really warm, but all the trees are alive. And I'm walking past this grove of magnolia trees. And I can see that each branch of 
This entire grove was just laden with row upon row of these big, fat, green buds that were just about to separate. And I could see the little hairs on them. They were all just trembling. They were just like straining to contain the fresh, pink, fragrant, creamy blossom that was just straining inside, yearning to just be, burst out and be naked and free in the breeze. And I stood there and I looked at those trees and I felt the same thing inside me too. And I, I said to those trees, I know how you feel. I want to be pollinated. <laughs> And then the kind of good-looking, age-appropriate man to my left who was walking the border collie looked at me and just bolted into the park. <laughs> and I went home and I sat on the floor of my kitchen. I sat on my kitchen floor with my cats and I cried again because it had now been <clears throat> 18 months since I had last, as the good book puts it, known a man. And now I was even more a woman of a certain age. And statistically, I was more likely to be mauled by a tiger than ever again to rest by another lover. But a few weeks later, the unthinkable, the unimaginable, the unlikely and the unexpected thing happened. One night, a redhead walked into the old Bowery Poetry Club. Some of you may know that place. Yeah. And three hours later, walked out. Not alone. <laughs> the next morning, I woke up with a man in my bed. <laughs> but then I remembered his name was Larry. Oh, God, yuck, the worst name in the world. How could I sleep with a guy named Larry? But I had. And when he woke up and we had some breakfast and he asked me to walk him to the train because he was from Astoria and he didn't know my part of Brooklyn. So I had to walk him to the R train, 14 blocks. And all the way, he tried to hold my hand and I wouldn't let him. And he tried to hold my hand and I wouldn't let him because, come on, this said nothing, could be nothing more than a one-night stand. How could it be anything else? Hadn't I just broken every single dating rule in every book written forever? And plus, how old were we? And as he's going down into the subway, he looks at me and he smiles and he waves and he goes, I'll call ya! And I wave back and I go, yeah, right! <laughs> but the next day he did call. And we went out on a real first date. And, and then a second. And towards the end, I caught him sneaking Tic Tacs in his mouth when he was going, to, before he was going to kiss me. And that's when I realized, whoa! <gasps> He's nervous too? And I don't, well, let's just say that Monday, it's been six years since the man I now call Papi <laughs> and I have been together. And I don't know when, by what miracle, at a time when I was statistically supposed to have my total dry up and I just was supposed to be over with my life, I was for somehow was able to find another kindred spirit. And as we got to know each other, we found out that for 20 years, we had been living parallel lives and only now found ourselves in the same place when we were both ready to listen. And I don't, and all I can say is finding love at 50, like I said, sometimes miracles happen. Maybe I was just like those magnolia blossoms waiting for the right breeze to come along. Or maybe I'm just the kind of person who thinks no means find another way. Good night. Wow.